For this training video, I will show you how to perform a forecast analysis using Prediction Insight Now. This demonstration will use the forecasting data set provided in the Prediction Sample Data Workbook included with the Prediction Insight for Excel installation. Before I start the forecast task, I'm going to explain how your data needs to be organized. Essentially, your data needs to be organized like the data in this worksheet. First of all, there's a column representing time and additional columns containing numeric series of data. Notice that the time column is consistent. Every row represents one month and the months are increasing. There are no subtotals for quarters or years, only the monthly data. Your data can be whenever interval suits your problem, but it needs to be consistent. It's important that the data is in columns. The forecasting tool does not support data in rows. That is, with increasing time going to the right rather than down. If your data is in rows, you can copy your data and then use Excel's Paste Special tool to transpose the data into columns. Additionally, the forecasting tool only supports numeric data. If your data contains text qualifiers to indicate missing values or other situations, they need to be removed before using the forecasting tool. You should replace any text values with numeric values that are meaningful or simply delete them and leave the cell blank. If the forecasting tool encounters a blank cell, it will assume the cell contains a previous value for the purposes of calculations. Now, I will start the forecasting task by clicking on the forecast task icon on the Insight Now toolbar. Since I started the task while I was in the Wine data table, the forecasting task is automatically populated with the series columns from that table. I can use the checkboxes to select which series I wish to forecast. Note that the forecasting task looks for interrelationships between series, so if you forecast a single series, you may get different results than if you forecast them all together. The most important options in the forecasting task are the number of steps you want to forecast and the periodicity. In this case, I want to forecast sales out one year, so I'll set the number of units to forecast to 12, indicating 12 months. It is generally better to set the periodicity rather than letting the algorithm automatically detect it. In this case, our data is by month, so I will choose monthly. You can also tell the algorithm which column in the data represents the timestamp of each row. This field is entirely optional, and as long as your data is organized as previously described, you do not need a timestamp column in your data. Finally, click Run to start your forecasting task. When the task is complete, click Results to retrieve the forecasting report. If you have not selected to use the task pane, the report will be created automatically when the task completes. The forecasting report contains two sections. The first section is a chart showing the historical data in the forecasts. The second is a table containing a copy of the historical data with the forecasted results added at the end. If you have a large number of historical data points, it can sometimes be difficult to see the forecasted section of the chart. In this case, you can select a section of the copy of the historical data right-click and select Delete Table Rows. Remember, this is simply a copy of the data so you won't lose anything important. Trimming your historical data series often produces a more interpretable chart. At this point, you can format your chart as required for your reporting and then print or publish the results. This concludes the training video for forecasting Please visit our help and website for more training videos for Prediction Insight.